local of control. The local of control. Now, to break it down, the word local is talking about location. So this is talking about the location from where control or from where someone feels a sense of control. Okay? So, um, in order to actually break it down more deeper, locus of control refers to an individual perception about the underlying main cause and event of his or her, or her life. It, it refers to the channel, the direction from which control or from which a man takes a shape or form of behavior, you know, or begins to form, of course, you know, um, mindset. Let's talk about mindset. Why we ask you to develop the right mindset is because once your mindset that set, it's just like when you are trying to mold up a block, okay? And of course, you have to meet the standard and the cement, and then you get the mold, you want to, you know, get the structure of the block. The moment you put it like that and it has taken that shape, and the sun hits it over a period of time, it will set. So, more like the, the propelling thing that makes you to take decisions, or the decisions you take in life, the most important decisions of your life, where the control of those decisions are coming from. Now, we have two locus of control. We have the external locus of control and internal locus of control. I'm going to be breaking it down today. Now, some set of people possess the external locus of control. These are set of people who believe that the most important decisions of their life should be determined by God, faith, people in higher authority, like maybe parents, their boss, where they are working, or uh, you know some other sort of people they have regard for. Okay, so these people believe that the most important decision about their life should actually come from these people who influence them greatly. Okay, now we have the internal locus of control. People who believe that the most important decisions of their life should actually be made by them, not God, or not faith, not um, any other external factor, maybe a mentor, or uh, maybe a parent, maybe anybody could be a teacher, someone you have great regard for something. Okay, so they believe that the most important decisions of their life is actually coming from within. This set of people are said to possess the internal locus of control. Their, their, their control, their sense of control comes from within, comes from the internal, you know, um, an internal, okay? So let's talk about the differences. Now, this set of people who possess the external locus of control, who believe that most important decisions of their life should be made by people in higher authority, or by circumstances, they probably have power to control. Um, what happens to them is that, of course, I've seen people throw in that line and they succeed because I, I've always said that I believe that these things are interconnected. There, are, there is probably someone in your circle that just needs to be blessed. And if that person is truly blessed, I believe that the blessing can come around you, can reach you. You know, uh, my pastor who always tell me that. When God blesses your neighbor, you need to be happy because it means that God is in your neighbor, right? No, now, so these kind of people have seen those who told this line and make it. Um, however, on the other hand, these are people who tend to blame, you know, a lot of people who put the blame for things that happen in their life to other people. They kind of come to that point in life where they say, God, where are you? Do you really exist? And this thing happened and all of that. It was, it was my mom, my father caused it. Ah, if not for this. So they always have someone to push out them when things happen or when things do not happen. And they, don't know, they do not have real sense of control over their life. However, uh, these other people who have the internal locus of control, because they have this high sense of uh, responsibility and they want to make every single moment count because they believe they should hold themselves accountable for the most important things that happen in their life. Sometimes, uh, 
Research has actually proven that more of them succeed in life and make it to the top positions you've ever known in your life. All the top, you know, all the um, you know, um, uh, high parasitals you see people occupying. These are people, the people who have that kind of internal look of control actually will make it more to the top because uh, at every single point, you see these kind of people are people that when they make it, they make it. When they don't make it, they don't leave blame. They don't look at, oh, God, why are you not there and all of that. They, they must they take responsibility for their failure and for their success. Now, from my literal explanation, you should understand that one of the reasons why I want us to dive into this topic is that I personally affected my life. And when I saw it affect my life, I started to see it uh, to people who my lifestyle more or less attracted. And when I did see the result that it produced for them, I was so, so happy. And I believe that someone needs this particular topic right now. And the topic is going to open someone's eye into taking probably a better direction or uh, forming another shape or maybe reshuffling their thinking because the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that's why your thoughts, with, it controls virtually everything about you. I said earlier, I think I said last week in the meeting, I said that there's this like, uh, a cybernetic start changing that attracts whatever your mind can assimilate. Whatever your mind can think and believe it, there's always this force that is released to go and attract it. It's one of the greatest laws that exists in life called the law of attraction. Now, um, now those who have this uh, internal locus of control, of course, this is where I want us to be. This is where I want us. I want everybody to get to that point where you now begin to think that, yes, as much as there are circumstances, in as much as there are people who actually, you know, are, are much more advanced than people who I look up to, but to an extent, I should also grow. Please take note of the word grow. I should also go myself to be competent enough to make good decisions for myself. Okay? The, the internal locus of control is very wonderful. It's something that everybody needs to adapt. But the problem that comes for uh, one of the uh, aftermath effects of developing an internal locus of control is that if it is not massive competence, people are actually uh, prone to a lot of mistakes. And this has research has also proven that it has resulted to a lot of depression, suicide, and what have you. Because when you channel your energy into the wrong decision constantly, the resultant effect is going to be that you are going to be coming out with negative results. Negative results will always come up with, you know, blame, regret, and this point where you're actually taking blame for yourself, it, it can actually eat within you, and it can, it can expose a lot of persons to, you know, doing what's actually socially aberrant. And uh, that's about that. But however, it is very good that someone has an internal locus of control that is, uh, uh, the location where a, a, a person's sense of control is coming from is actually from within that. He has a lot of control to what, and uh, of course, the antecedent around his life, okay? Uh, it's very good, but it is very important that it is much his competence. It's very, very important that it is much his competence. And when you're talking about competence, you want to talk about consistency, because you'll never be good at something you don't do on a regular basis. These are the, these are the only, these are the, the uh, ingredients that the one has to possess, I now talking about being confident because I I remember that certain things I believe I know how to do from great extent. There were times I was no be there was a time I had to stay in the level of unconscious incompetence at a point I now knew that okay, I really need to move it high so I get to the point of okay, conscious incompetence. I'm actually incompetent and then I never thought that that I had to actually work myself to a point where uh, I'm already putting the work. At the point, I don't even know how good I have become, but I'm now unconsciously in, uh, competent, rather. I'm, I'm in a, there is a, a, a phase of a, uh, the level of competence called conscious, sorry, unconscious competence. And then from there, I worked myself to certain levels where I became conscious that, come on, what I'm going there to do is to 
you know, do it again. I've always done it before. It's time to do it again. Do something. I've mastered. Okay, so uh, you talk about consistency. So now you need to develop a lot of competence if you want to go in the line of uh, uh, developing an internal locus of control. And I can tell you that most of the people who have made life more easy and more comfortable for a lot of thousands of us are people who have the internal locus of control. Because these kind of people have the capacity to see something out of where everybody is not listening anything from. Okay? These kind of people are maverick. They have unconventional mindsets, okay? They don't they don't believe in public opinion most times. They have their own, you know, uh, thoughts that most times are being baffled by many and well, but, but if the, the good thing is that if they are competent enough, they become consistent, you know, and uh, they, they put in the laws of constancy, and consistency, you know, over, you know, a discipline, you know, it makes that they begin to uh, you know, develop or achieve uncommon results. And of course, one of the things that mankind has not found the power to resist in life is results. Results. Results silences. Is uh, most as I talk in the morning, I want to boost my energy. I just want to, you know, make myself feel good because I understand very. I play with words a lot. I understand that words are energy. I make some kind of statements that you know put up some kind of you know good feeling in me. I make statements like I am a son that is connected to the son that sorry, I'm a son that is connected to the son that produces results and silences insult and makes me a thought that people consult. Now these are kind of, you know, positive words I try to put up to myself, you know, to, you know, feel good about it. Because I believe that if I feel energetic uh, in the beginning of the day, of course, it's going to affect every other of my day, right? So, that is that, okay? So, results will always silence results, okay? So, now, let's begin to take a practical look into the life of most people who have uh, the internal locus of control. I don't want to talk about people who have the, the external locus of control because honestly, the three are very, very and emotional. But not to, you know, fulfill their vision. You know, this is just an example. There are so many other examples out there, but, you know, it's all having to do with the area where control or where the the location from where one draws a level of control from. Okay, so uh, let me talk about. I will dwell on the internal level of control. I talk about men like uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates became the richest man, and I think he for for a record, he was one of the men that lasted very 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 long. You know, in fact, occupying the uh, first position for couple of, in fact, for, I think, before, you know, some adjustments started happening on that list, some other great people who have been putting in some work somewhere, you know, started sprouting out the likes of Slim Carlos, the likes of, uh, 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 the Bezos started coming up, the likes of uh, uh, Larry Serge. You know, a lot of people started springing up, you know, in that particular list. But now, Bill Gates, I remember that when I studied about the biography of Bill Gates, at some point he had some great contentions with the parents. There were times he just wants to lock up himself in the room in a day. He's not eating, not like there's, you know, he doesn't come out to live life just like every other person wants to do that. Okay, like when you stay indoors so much, you just want to go outside and, you know, it's just like this guy is just different. He style is just different. He's always locking up himself in the room. You know, the parents are always picking up on him to know, are you, do you have this psychological problem? What's the problem? Is there anything you're not telling us about? Are you about to take your life? And all of that. Every single time they do those questions to Bill Gates, he has always responded with one thing. I am thinking, Mom, Dad, don't you think? The man has always been a thinker. Now, there were times where he had to fight his private time to think. With his, you know, it was a struggle with family. 
is not going with the plan. We plan that family is going to do this, do that, do that, but he never consented to all of this. Even as a child, this guy has a level of control to his thoughts, and of course, you, you can see what the result became over years. Okay, over years, he was he was proven right that he was actually able to put up a thought and develop something that uh, has the seeds of the non days business, which is not something I'm going to talk about in this meeting. You know, came up with a system that is deceptive. Let me talk about one of the B's. The benefit of every year I hear talk about a system of a deceptive system of business where he doesn't even have to pay for logistics. You never see any of his called Microsoft anywhere in Kedja or in Abuja or anywhere, even uh, in, in Africa. Not talk about the world, you talk about how he, he never has a uh, have drivers and all of that. He's able to put up a deceptive business through quality thinking. That started when he was still a child. I remember when he went to a particular restaurant, and of course, after taking a meal, the waiter was pressuring him like, ah, I just met the richest man in the world. Wow, stop. Anything for me or something? The man gave him, uh, I think, uh, was that um, uh, some dollars, about $5. Ah, uh, the, wait, the waitress actually, uh, you know, began to talk about how... Uh, how disappointed she was because the daughter of Bill Gates had eaten there and when she was about to go, she gave her a hundred dollars now meeting the father who is the richest man, now having five dollars from, you know, after <laughs> explaining that concern. There was something Bill Gates said. Bill Gates said her, her father is the richest man in the world. But my own father was a grass cutter who was a poor man. Right? So, you know, um, and that was, in fact, if you were to judge Bill Gates, why would you say such a thing? Come on, are you stingy? But everybody knows that, uh, more or less, uh, Bill Gates has been one of the biggest donors across in the world. Uh, yeah, so uh, that taking the principle aspect of uh, Bill Gates and relating it to what we are discussing, which is having the internal liquid of control. Now, um, we had our own champion here in Nigeria. Of course, a lady who got, you know, to the international stage and got her some glory back home in Africa. I'm so very, very proud of her. Her name is Sobi Amusan. She broke the world record, right? Now, when I had to read one of the articles she dropped, I could, rec I could recall that I read uh, where she was saying that there were times because the father never allowed her to go train for sports, never bought the idea of her becoming a sports girl and whatsoever, an athlete and what have you. She had to even fake religious uh, uh, programs or maybe uh, activities. And then when she you know, gets the time, she uses to go and train. You know, when coming back, she also dressed up in an attire that looked like she went. And even to the point that the parents had to discover. You can imagine the kind of... Uh, 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 kind of suppression she would have passed through. Sometimes uh, a father can even threaten the point of, I would disown you, and all of that. And then she was still able to keep and protect that thing that the father was not actually... You know, most times when people begin to bring up their own suggestions, yeah, like your parents, people in authority, your mentors, your bosses, and uh, of course people you... You have this uh, respect for, and they begin to bring up their own ideas. If you look at it from the literal perspective, it's like they are protecting you, right? They love this person. I don't want this person to be going out by this time because, of course, this person can actually be. Oh, uh, she's a lady; she can be exposed to danger. What if? What if? And all of that. So you find this kind of um, a sentimental love around their reason, right? And at this point, they have good reasons. They are not saying what you are saying. For them, the path you want to do is that. But you, who is about to take that route, you already seen the light from the end of the tunnel, and you are able to hold on to it. Now, Toby and Musan went through all of these processes, and wow, she broke a record that got her name in the Guinness Book of Records. That, that's amazing. You can imagine. That's amazing. What about Moses? Moses is the Bible. Of course, if you're be, be a Christian, uh, this story will relate more to you. From, from growing up as a child, 
Moses has always had this internal locus of control. Bible recorded that by faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. This was a man who has been adopted by a king, had pleasure, could do anything, was parented as the son, like the son of the king. The son found, the, sorry, the king found so much favor in this man, and you know, and yes, in that state of comfort, somebody still has this internal mindset of no, I know who I am, I know where I come from. I believe there is something that is within me that is desperately, you know, asking for liberation for my people. This can explain why at a point uh, Moses, you know, bumped into an Egyptian and an Israelite fighting. You, if you, if you've been, uh, if you are consistent with Bible story, you will know what I'm talking about. Moses immediately acted. He had to kill the guy. Like I'm protecting my brother, and even the person was protecting, perceiving wrongly, and started, ah, really? The next event when he now came to separate his own brother, like why are you fighting each other? They started running away. Ah, have you come to kill us like the way you killed the Egyptian the other day? Are, are we still safe? That was when Moses now knew it was time to run. <laughs> so you see, as at that point, Moses had an internal locus of control. He knows what he has to do. He knows that there are forces who are actually in his favor that can turn against his favor if he goes for that thing he wants. But already in his mindset, he was already seeing the light from you know, the dark zone where people cannot see it from, right? And because at a point in his life, he was not competent, he was not endowed, he, has, he was not fortified to, you know, he, ha he has not been sent to accomplish that particular task. His, his internal locus of control, you know, overtook him to the point where he had to act so fast and that got his heart, his, his fingers burned. But see what happened. By the time that man who came, he came. And of course, he delivered the people of Israel. Everybody knows about that story. What about David in the Bible? What about David? Wow. Each time I read the story of David, I see... I think David is, is the man who lived great in the dispensation of the law. Yes. I can categorically say that so many Bible references are passed to that. I... I am a believer and, of course, a reader of the Bible. I don't read the Bible just because it's a religious book. No, I don't even read it as a religious book, but I don't consider myself a religious person. I read the Bible because it contains every wisdom that every other book taps from, right? Books are books, but you talk about the book, you're referring to the Bible. That's why every other great book out there made references to the Bible. You will agree with me on that. So, um, David, when I study about David, I see a man who also has the internal locus of control. Could you imagine if you, if you were you and I today and you are at, at a small and tender age, you actually, uh, uh, you know, really your shepherd, you know, your, sorry, your sheep, you are already, you're already, you know, you know, on the move with your sheep, you know, you know, trying to lead them to find green pastures and then the deer and the lion comes out from nowhere just to attack them. Can you imagine putting himself in the line just to make sure that he protects even the least of the sheep? Okay? That does not just portray the act of a good shepherd. It also goes ahead to show you how much, how much, you know, this man has this uh, uh, a sense of control that comes from within. Can you imagine? If it was to be, if it was to be people who want to take uh, decisions from their father, they would have allowed that to happen the first day and then go back. Hey, daddy, you know, lion came and this, if he comes next time, what would I do? Right? But this guy had to make up instant decisions and he started putting this thing to practice to the point that when Goliath had troubled even the king of Israel came, everybody was already in. Days we are already going. This man has even thrown a talent and given days, days we are going. You know? And because David had, he's an unconventional guy. I, I believe he's a maverick. He's a man who thinks from outside the box, okay? Now, because 
He was already seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. He was saying things that other people cannot relate to. Who is this uh, uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this one? Who is he was challenging the power that be at that time. Can you imagine? I remember when he came through. I remember one of his, his uh, brothers, his half brothers, of course. Uh, if you know the story of David, you know that. He has half brothers, right? So uh, one of his half brothers approached him and was like, Oh, hey, hey, you have come again. Hey, hey, Mr. Show yourself. What are you here to do? We that are professional soldiers, you are trained to the military. We've been here, we couldn't say a word. You that is just in the bush, wearing sheep, as a shepherd boy, you are here to, what are you here to do? Okay, so, uh, and of course, when I looked at the response of David, I was, I was shocked at, like, what, what, what's written drawn for this guy? Okay, so, to the point that even when he offered himself, after he had asked, what is, what is, uh, what is uh, the reward for anybody who is going to kill this man, to get the head, to deliver the head of this man to the king? And he was told, and he appeared and said, ah, send me, sir. Did you say you would do this? Yes, send me, sir. The man looked at him and said, whose son are you? Let's start from there. So, like, who has this kind of courage in Israel? Right? Now, um, Saul went ahead, after he ex explained himself, Saul went ahead to say, you are only but a youth. This one has been a warrior from his own youth. And I want you to imagine that there is a problem that is eating up the whole of Nigeria. Every strong man you think you know in Nigeria is already on his And a 17-year-old shepherd boy comes out from the bush and tells you, you see this problem? Is it money I'm going to solve? Can you imagine? Now, I'm, I'm talking about the courage that would have even allowed a loving king like Saul to, to now say, okay, oh, if you have said like this, no problem, go. It would have been a strong conviction from the within. David is a man who ate uh, 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 a bread from the temple, something that nobody does. He was said he was going to die. They die for where? He's a man who has a secret place. Of course, I don't want to talk about the spiritual aspect of David, but I know that David was always a man who, who's, uh, um, of course, he produced extraordinary results. If you read about the, uh, the mighty men of David, if you see the kind of exploit this guy did, you will know that he would have only taken a man with an internal locus of country to raise a kind of people like that who think, you know, in like mind, right? So that is that. Developing an internal locus of control will help you to go far in your life and in your career. Of course, um, let's talk about uh, the more. This is uh, someone who I know very well in my field. I want to tell you a little bit about his story. He was born to a very beloved family who had very good dreams about their children and uh, you know that kind of family where the mother and the father has already said my, my child is going to be a lawyer, my is going to be a banker, that one is going to be this, okay? So he happened to actually come from that kind of a family and uh, he has always wanted to go after his own passion but the father has not really, it was not going down well with the father, the father has always wanted him to be a medical doctor and all of that. So. After so many pressures and pressures, he could not handle it again because of, of course, his upbringing and his faith. The more went ahead to study medicine. This man studied and studied, and he was very serious. He was a man who likes to devote into anything he's doing. Anything he's doing, he gives it all of his time, all of his attention, all he takes, and everything he has done has given him all contains because he gives it all it takes, right? So he devoted his time to study and studied and studied and studied and studied and studied and broke a record in his school. He became the best ever graduating medical doctor this school had ever pre uh, produced. So because of that, there was, you know, it, it broke news everywhere. It was actually a record. So there was a stage that was set up 
to, you know, celebrate him and of course award him and, you know, recognize the family of recognize what that 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 event was actually meant for him because you know, he made the school proud and all of that, you know, they were, uh, you know, book records and all of that. So, on that event, the monk came out, uh, sorry, um, after some other people had celebrated, it was time for him, you know, everybody was clapping, his, his parents first came out, out of enthusiasm and passion, said, wow, this is amazing. This is going to be one of the most beautiful days of our life because we've, ever, we've always dreamed about this day. Always dreamed of giving the world a doctor who is going to this, that, 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 that. You know, said a lot of great things, and you know, everybody were clapping. The moment the more started walking up the aisle to the stage, oh my god, you could see tons of praises. Everybody was calling him with praises, and the man took the mic, took for some seconds, and started crying. Everybody was shocked, like, what is this man doing? He cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. When people were still waiting to hear him say something, he turned to his father and to his mother. The parents, of course, said, Dad, Mom, I've used these years of my life to pursue and achieve your dream to the best of my you know, ability. And my, the best of my ability became the best that my school has ever had as a record. Now, I've gone to the extra mile that I've achieved your dream. Can you now allow me to go and achieve my own dream? I feel I made it back. But within me, I still feel empty. I feel like I have not fulfilled my purpose. This result did not make any meaning to me if I do not fulfill my purpose. Even the parents broke down and were shocked. It was the greatest shock of their life. They, they never believed that this guy did not argue them for a couple of years and put in the work to come out as the best after all the theoretical and practical aspects and has mastered this craft to this point to come and say this to them. They gave up, right? They gave up. So, today, Particularly, I'm a music minister, I'm a musicologist. I have known people who did more complex songs than the born. I know people who did more technical songs than the born. Right? But I can tell you, in the scope of popularity, there is virtually nobody who does not see the born, who is a Christian, right? That even is cut across most other sects, and most people just know, yeah, there is somebody who is called the born, right? But there are so many other powerful names out there. But not everybody knows Ty Tribet. Not everybody knows uh, Juanita Bynum. Not everybody knows Dietrich Haddon. Not every, everybody knows uh, um, um, uh, Donet. Not everybody knows Kim Burrell, right? But almost everybody knows the Lord because he brought simplicity and being into his music and is sold worldwide more than whatever I've seen any doctor, you know. Produced out of any hospital, right? Okay. And um, so, what what he went for beyond making him fulfilled also helped a lot of people. There were at some point someone had that particular song, and it was a turning point for him. It was a particular thing that led something. I can tell you this: uh, how because music is life. I've never seen anybody who hates music. You can only say you don't like this kind of music, or you like that kind of music, right? Like music transmits more than work, but this is not a musical class, right? So I want to talk about internal locus of control. So that, that's why I'm talking this way to that, right? So he went ahead and he pursued his dream. And today, I don't know, maybe he would have been richer as a doctor. He just maybe right now he has money and he feels very still. And I think that is the biggest legacy. Because I've seen people who have a lot of money, but they are still in a, in a state of unrest. They still feel that there is a part of their life they could have done more. You know, people would not end up regretting the things they did. They will only get to regret the things they did not do, right? So, that is that. So, this is why, uh, I don't know 
if Thomas Edison would have produced us an electric uh, an electric bulb, if he never had an internal locus of control that gave him capacity to sell over 99 times and kept trying before he got his death with his breakthrough. I wouldn't know if Colonel Sander would have been a billionaire at 56 if he never had the tenacity and the locus of control that you know came from within to have stopped him from committing suicide. After he has tried over 30 things in life and they all failed. Before he now thinks, thought about this thing, he knows how to do very much more than any other person he has seen him doing. And that was how to fight the fight chicken. That was how he got Kentucky fight chicken, right? So um, I, I don't think, I don't think that the life of uh, 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 what's it called? What's the richest man? Like, what's his name again? Uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk would have broken down, being that Africa has always been perceived not to come up to a particular cadre. Not everybody knows that that guy is an African, right? So that is that. So uh, I think if you now want to relate this back to our industry, you will discover that most people are saying, uh, People who maximize the most of their business are people who also develop an internal liquid of country. Why? Reason because uh, it will only take a leader who has an internal liquid of country to claim ownership of the business. Right? I've, I've listened to people talking about personal life somewhere and they say, in, in the company, they say that when you do it like this. Now, that does not, you know. <laughs> When you talk to people, what, what they actually buy is their confidence, right? And when you use language, they can actually perceive the strength of your conviction, right? So it will only take someone who has an internal locus of country to take ownership of the business. Right? To, to pay the dues of network marketing, because there are little dues that when you pay them, Ripping from the well, the oil well of this industry, of course, mm -hmm. very massive. I can tell you, people earn as much and as rich as the scholars in the industry. It's no more a history, right? It's proven for years. Most times, people even stay in wealth more in network marketing than most scholars, because um, you will see the likes of them that got so rich and over a period of time, they are you know, depreciating and their growth is just reversing. There are people who have been able to build a system that has lasted for them for a couple of years. There are companies I know that has done over 60 years, over 70 years, going to 100 years. And the companies, I can tell you, has remained. Talk about companies like Amway, right? Okay, so um, that is that. You need to claim ownership of your business, right? Most times I tell people, Come to my office at number 36 Dalabi Street. That is not because I am the sole owner of the office, but because I believe that this Papa Life business is something I share ownership about. It's not because I'm an image maker, not because I'm part of the management, but because I feel like this is my own. Anytime I look at Papa Life, I look at Papa Room, I look at, I feel like this our own right so i use that those where i say in my company we do this the reason why i love my company is those languages is sensing is sending a signal of ownership a, a signal of confidence you know so you want to own the business you want to protect the business i remember going to share an opportunity to somebody a couple of years ago and he told me i know the ceo of this company i know the ceo of this company I asked him who. By the time he called the name, it was actually a distributor like me. I said, really? There are people branded themselves to become the CEO of the same business I'm pushing, whereas they are distributors like myself. And do you know what the resultant report was? That guy became the top owner in the, in, in the African space in that particular business because he was able to claim ownership, because he was able to sack his offline, right? Now, it would take someone who has an internal locus of control to be able to do most of those things, right? 
now to be able to pay their dues, to be able to understand that there are sacrifices that are attached to, you know, success, no? To be able to learn the business. I usually tell my people, you only have to pay more from the day you sign up. You ask me all the question, rally around me as offline and all of that, and then after three months, I sack you, don't sack you. Them has produced me a lot of silvers in my organization, a lot of golds, and of course rubies in my organization, right? I've seen the result of this particular tactics, right? And that is it. That is it. I have so many other things on, you know, or about this topic, but time will not permit me to say all of them. So I'm going to share with you as to cap up the value that you've gotten tonight. I'm going to share with you the first principle. If you want to succeed in network marketing, if you want to succeed in Fab for Life, you want to engage the fast principle, the principle of fast, right? Fast there is an acronym. F stands for faithful. If you want to build a magnificent team that will produce you massive results, the first thing you want to consider is that you want to be faithful. I tell you, people rally around, people speak around faithful leaders. One of the things that we are still lacking in the industry is faithful people, right? And it's a scarce commodity. Any place people identify you, they don't even mind to, uh, let me not talk about this, but they don't even mind to exit where they are to speak to people like this. Let me even spend it in that world as rare as it is. So it is a scarce commodity, right? Now, there is a saying that problem solvers are in short supply. So there's a space for anybody who becomes one, right? Now, the A principle is accessibility. You must be accessible to your, your leader. At some point, they need you to answer some certain question. At some point, they need you to must be accessible to them. If you are not accessible to them, it means you are not producing other leaders. And if you are not producing other leaders, it means you are heaping a bunch of followers for yourself. And if you are heaping a bunch of followers for yourself, you are heaping head deck, piling up head deck for yourself, right? And this is going to slow down how fast you can actually run in this business, right? So the next thing there is S. You need to sponsor. You don't need to be the kind of offline who sits down and give control. Yes, you could have to do it without me. No, you also need to go out in the field and produce results. Let your people see that you are also producing results, even as you are propelling them to uh, produce results. There is no, there is no better way to teach people by than showing them practical example of how to do it, right? So you need to always sponsor. If you do this, it means that you are more likely to sponsor more leaders who are more likely to do more great things in this business, right? And then the last is that you need to be teachable. To be coming from meetings like this, where there is knowledge flowing in abundance, you you know when 85 people has chosen the best place to be today to get value, over a thousand persons has chosen to ignore, and at the end of the day, that is the kind of people who become ignorant, right? So you need to be teachable, and you are not being teachable so that you learn. You are being teachable so that you learn. Because when you learn it, it's temporary, but when you teach it, it becomes permanent. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much. It is four minutes past the hour of nine, and I'm going to be taking a bow here. I believe you got value tonight, and I believe that you are willing and able to fly at this point in time. Thank you so very much. I remain easy great, the management support team that is in charge of the back office and the plan. Thank you so very much. I'll be handing over to...